These mystery military micro-tanks will blow your mind. Military tanks, which we often see in bigger and enormous sizes, spit fire and bombs against their opponents to help their country achieve a remarkable victory. We all see these military tanks in gigantic sizes, so how come military tanks come in micro-sizes? This is highly contentious because many countries build their military tanks in micro-sizes for convenience. In this video, we are going to exhibit some of the mini military tanks that actually will blow your mind. Fasten your belts and let's jump into the video. Coming in at number 6, we have the Tankettes. The name of this class of tanks should be self-explanatory. They were developed in the intervening years between the two world wars, and some of them participated in the second world war combat. The German Rheinmetall AG Weasel was the only exception to this rule because their light armour was susceptible to the majority of weapons used in the fight. This kind of tank was inspired by World War I, where the infantry was unable to hold the ground while the Allied tanks would penetrate the opposing trenches. Thus, the tank initially seemed like a decent solution. A machine gun or occasionally a 20mm autocannon or grenade launcher was their primary armament, and the majority of them lacked turrets or even tank guns. When Gifford Lecane Martel built one in his garage and showed it into the war office, he came up with the initial concept for a one-man tank. After that, the war office created the two-man Carton Lloyd tank, which was thought to be the most effective. These little tanks saw extensive usage by the Italian Royal Army. They constructed a significant number of L333 and L335s and outfitted three divisions with them for use during the invasion of Ethiopia, the Spanish Civil War, and anywhere else that the Italians fought. And at number 5, we have the FV191 Scorpion. The Scorpion was a challenging opponent to strike due to its ability to move quickly around the battlefield. All of their heavy armour and mounts had to be removed for the British Army to order this vehicle with the primary goal of making it air transportable. Even without any of the heavy armour, the armour that it did still have was made of an aluminium alloy. The engine and transmission also had steel plates that could be removed. The forward position motor provided additional cover for the crew and could withstand 14.5mm rounds fired from a distance of 200 metres thanks to its welded turret and holes. In all other respects, 7.62mm and protection from artillery shrapnel were provided. There are three people operating it, a commander, a driver and a gunner. Equipped with a 7.62mm cannon and a 7.62mm rifle. The range for the weapon elevation is plus or minus 10 degrees. She joined the British Army in 1973, and despite retiring in 1994, she still serves in other exported militaries. And now at number 4, we have the Badger. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the Badger is the smallest man-operated tank in the entire world. Don't be deceived by the Badger's appearance. Despite its size, the Badger's main purpose is to breach buildings and other fortified positions, and it does so very efficiently. If the door is well fortified, it will also enter through the wall. Its armour also shields it from all light weapons, heavy machine guns and smaller explosions. The design of the Badger allows it to readily break any barrier, and the narrow front wall deflects low calibre bullets, allowing squat squads to enter heavily guarded regions where human soldier would not be able to. At number 3, the M22 Locust. A successful war machine is the exact opposite of this one. It was created on behalf of the American government at the British War Office's request. A new light tank was developed in the United States by Marmon Harrington at the request of the British War Office to replace the Tetrarch light tank with a specifically designed and built airborne tank after prototypes were built in large numbers in 1943 and 1944, but production ended in 1945. The Mark VII Tetrarch light tank was developed specifically for this type of mission. The T9 was the name of the initial design. Transport options were a C-45 aeroplane, which did require the removal of the turret, or a Hamilker glider, which allowed the Locust to be deployed through a wide opening nose door. From 1943 to 1945, he constructed roughly 830 of these tanks, which were subsequently modified and given the name the M22 Locust. 
However, only 230 vehicles were sent to Britain, where they joined in the 6th Airborne Armoured Reconnaissance Regiment and arrived in late 1943. On D-Day, the Locusts were replaced with older Tetrarchs because of mechanical issues with the original vehicles. The Locust was fully incorporated into the formation by the paratroopers following their return from Operation Normandy, though. They were used in the Operation Varsity, crossing the Rhine in March of 1945, and, like the Tetrarchs before them, they were entirely protected by German armour and proved to be inadequate in effectiveness and survivability. In addition to this, they also had a high chance of being destroyed by infantry anti-tank weaponry like the Panzerfaust. Because of this, there were fewer than eight dispatched Locusts. Coming in at number two, we have the Rheinmetall Wiesel I. Paratroopers needed to be protected from some of the weapons and, at the very least, carry certain anti-tank weaponry. With this in mind, the Rheinmetall AG Wiesel I was developed as a result. At first, they were intended to be small enough to be flown by cargo planes, but subsequently they wanted to be able to transport it by helicopters. When it was created by Porsche in the middle of the 1980s, there was just one basic design with a 20mm autocannon. In cross-country terrain, it can travel at 65 km per hour and 80 km per hour respectively. There is only a two-person crew operating this, the driver and the gunner. A 2-litre, 5-cylinder VW turbo diesel engine with 85 horsepower powers this vehicle. The name of this vehicle, Wiesel, which means weasel in English, refers to its agility and ability to move swiftly and stealthily against any adversary. Although it's not amphibious, it can move through 50 centimeters of water unprepared, making it perfect for battles with modest vegetation. For use in anti-tank warfare, later variants were given two missiles. A crew of three ran these since they were a lot heavier. But in 1993, Rheinmetall Wiesel I manufacturing came to an end. A number of weapons were already placed on the platform by that time, and later, the new Wiesel II, which had a larger size, more power, and more adaptable equipment, including command and medical kinds, as well as a radar anti-aircraft missile launchers, appeared. And finally, coming in at number one, we have the Themis UGV. The UGV, an unmanned ground vehicle, was built and created in Estonia by Miriam Robotics. Its modular design makes it possible to order it in many configurations for various uses, and it can be used as cargo for warfare, ISR, surveillance, reconnaissance, and even EOD. The United States, Germany, Estonia, France, the Netherlands, Norway, the United Kingdom, and seven other NATO members have militaries that use this vehicle. It has a plethora of benefits, one of which being its hybrid motor, which enables you to drive at a low center of gravity on 60% of the uphill climbs and a 30% maximum bank from zero to a very low noise signature. It operates in all weather conditions, at day and night, and is outfitted with cutting edge sensors and a variety of vision cameras. The primary goal is to support the infantry by supplying ammunition or by transporting injured soldiers who lack ammunition to more advanced medical facilities. A tiny number of these vehicle combinations can alter the course of a conflict due to the vitality of the process involved. For effective anti-tank systems, 81mm mortars or Javelin anti-tank missiles can be deployed. The capabilities of ISR units enable infantry to identify enemy drones and gather useful intelligence on enemy forces. And that concludes today's video. If you enjoyed, please leave us a like and tell us your thoughts about these vehicles in the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining us today. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content and ring the bell icon to keep updated on all of our upcoming videos. With that said, that's all for today. See you next time.